Hi Ronnie, if we could start with a little bit of team news ahead of tomorrow, how's Matty Pearson after Saturday? Uh, he's, he's okay. He's okay. A little bit sore. It was just a, it was just a bang on his leg. Uh, so hopefully nothing too bad. So we will just give him a couple of days recovery and uh, take it from there. And in terms of the time frame, a couple of the other players that were missing, Lee's, Kasumu, I take it they won't be available. Well, Lee's is getting there. Tom's getting there. He's uh, been out on the grass in a little bit of running. So hopefully we'll see Tom uh, in the near future. League Cup games, some fans look at it like, are they that bothered? But I take it after the weekend, you'll be raring to go and get that first win of the season. Yeah, we're always raring to go, but when you say get the first win of the season, we've only had one game. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's not too critical yet. Yeah. yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, the gaffer wants to make a couple of changes, give people a chance, uh, which gives the manager an opportunity to see what he's got in his squad in depth. So, these games are good for that. I guess you're right, players like a Pat Jones, for example, who came off the bench and looked lively. It's a chance for those kind of players to really impress. Yeah, the gaffer, the gaffer hasn't made, uh, named his team yet, but uh, yeah, lads like that uh, who, who do, do need the minutes if they're going to come on and impact the first team. I guess you say it's only one game in, but Middlesbrough have lost on the opening day as well. They'll be looking to prove a point, won't they? Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think prove a point. I think every team you come up against wants to win like we do. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, you get the rubber, rubber the green, sometimes you don't. I thought Saturday, uh, at 1-1, one, one, I, I think I'd have been disappointed with a point. And then to come away with none, but as you know, that's football. And, <laughs> and if you just don't do a few basic things right, it comes back to run, you. I guess, looking back on that and what you just said then, what's been the message from Neil and yourself to the players going into tomorrow? Just be positive, like we always do. Positive, do your jobs. Enjoy playing for this football club. And... Uh, Hopefully, the lads who were coming in get enough minutes to show the manager that they're worthy of a start in the league matches. Just on yourself, Ronnie, because we haven't really had a chance to speak since you and Neil came back to the club. How have you found being back at Huddersfield Town? It's great. It's always good to come back at Huddersfield Town. It's a fantastic football club. Uh, I've seen it in better times, with bigger squads, better squads. Uh, but we come in last year, the lads were an absolute credit to themselves, uh, what they did for the manager and the football club. And uh, hopefully we can start building on that, but it, it takes t it takes a little bit of time. He can't change it overnight. So hopefully the gaffer, you know, he's a, he's the best man for the job by a mile. Uh, he's got an affinity to the football club like I have, and we just want to do well. Uh, and hopefully we can turn it round in terms of our results and not wait until the latter stages of the season like last year. Did you envisage at the end of last season that you would still be here this season? Uh, not really, no. Uh, but like we, we, we enjoyed it. And the, the fans were great. It's a good football club. And and, and, and when you're not doing well, they let you know. Hey, and rightly so. We, we don't mind that. We don't mind that at all. But we just want to give the best for the club. And they, they understand that, I think. And uh, so I'm, I'm great. I'm so happy we're staying, you know. Yeah. What, what was your immediate reaction when you spoke to Neil and said, look, there's a possibility that we're going to stay on another season? I just cancelled my holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you meant to be there? I'm not telling you. <laughs> Fair, enough. Fair enough. But you are enjoying it, aren't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, we love it. We love it, yeah. And, and you know, in an ideal world, you want you want everything in football, you know, squad-wise, but you don't get it. Yeah. So you've got to work at it, and the players have got to work at it. And hopefully, uh, with a couple of additions here and there, you, you get to where you want to be. Yeah, we spoke to Neil about potential additions just in, in your eyes, Ronnie. Where do you think if, if you could choose, where would you strengthen? Well, he, he, the gaffer knows where that is. He's he, he spoken to that in the past, so I don't want to really cover that. That's that's one for the manager. Tough run of games coming up. Borough tomorrow, Leicester, Borough away. That's the kind of run of fixtures you must relish. It is. They're great fixtures for the players, for the supporters, but you you know whether you're playing top of the league, bottom or in between in the, in the championship, there's no gimmies. Every game's got its uh, problems, but every game you play, I, thought, I always think you remember the chance uh, if you play yourself right. And like we say, we do them basics uh, and put one or two chances away which come our way. There's a lot of talk about how strong the championship this year, a lot of big clubs in the championship this year. When you're looking down the fixture list, Ronnie, are there any fixtures that stand out for you that you can't wait to be involved in? No, they're all, they're all tough ones. They're all tough ones, but ones to look forward to. Uh, I think it's the hardest championship there's been for a long time. I really do. If you look at the squads and in depth they've got, especially the nine subs now, and you look at some of the subs on the bench for yesterday and some of the squads yesterday, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough, tough league, but one to look forward to. A couple of home games coming up. Speaking of looking forward, I guess it's 
the first time for you and Neil with more fans and I know there was a pre-season friendly game there since last season that you're back at the John Smith Chins production now. Yeah we are and uh, I mean it was rocking last year it was fantastic and uh, it's up to us as, as the manager and staff to, and the players to get that going again because the supporters, they deserve that. But I also know the supporters realise, you know, you just can't turn, turn things overnight. It takes a little bit of time. So I think they're going to have to show a bit of patience at times uh, and get behind, the, get behind the boys, which they have done ever since we've been here. How much does that support mean to you on a personal level? Well, it's, it's not about me. So it's about the football club. It's not about me as an individual or, or, or the players. It's about them. It's their football club, and I've always said that. And it's their badge, and, and you know we should be proud to represent them, uh, which we are. And uh, and that's all me and the gaffer have done since we've been here. Is, is work really, really hard at what we do. Sometimes it's good enough. Sometimes it's not. But it, it's certainly for not for the, the lack of trying. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So Stephen, next. <coughs> A lot of youngsters in the group, are they, as a coach, particularly sort of rewarding to, to work with those players and develop those players? It, it is, Steve, but the thing is with, with developing players, I think that's got to come from the 23s. So hopefully when them players come through to you, they're already developed because in the, this big, bad, horrible championship, you've got to get people who, who are there and you can get your three points on the board. So in terms of the development side, that's great and trying out people, but we're there... Uh, we're on the cold face as such, and, and you know we've got to get points, and that's what we do. I suppose it's a, a bit of a credit to, to Worthy and the, the job that he's doing and the academy you're doing. That you've got players like Kean and um, you know you, you've had those players coming through, Pat Jones, players like that. Really. Yeah, they, 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 they've come through, but they've not proven anything yet. Yeah. So I wouldn't give anybody any plaudits at the moment in time. Uh, when they played about 50, 60 games for the club and got a few goals on board and create a few goals, then we'll give them the praise. But they've come in, they've shown a great attitude. They are developing. We've been in and around the first team squad, I think, which helps. And uh, hopefully they can come to the fore and become regulars in the team, which would be great for, great for Huddersfield. Obviously, if you form a centre forward yourself, we've seen you um, out in the West Country leading those, those shooting drills. Are those those players, Danny Ward, Keane Harrock, Carl Hudlin, are they looking sharp on the training pitch? Yeah, they, they all apply themselves really good on the training pitch, but when you're on that pitch on a Saturday afternoon, it's not dot to dot. It doesn't work like, you know, from that to that. You've got to be aware and have awareness and, and have that nous about you to go and sniff a goal out, to stop a, a goal at the other end. And, and I think that comes with experience and playing and, and that desire to score a goal and stop a, stop a goal. Uh, uh, having the desire to, to be brave on the ball and be brave off the ball in terms of uh, your work ethic. Because it's something you can't replicate, and that's where the experience comes in. Yeah, you can't replicate on a Saturday afternoon what goes on there in training. You can set them up for it. You can give them all the information on the opposition, uh, and then you just hopefully that things gel and it's your day. Speaking of which, what are you expecting from, from Middlesbrough tomorrow? Middlesbrough tough. They've got a good squad, uh, but we'll give them a tough game as well. And like I say, it's a great one for the for the manager. It's a good one for the supporters as well to see one or two of the lads who are underneath. Uh, to see what we've got at the football club and I hope the lads who, who, who put the shirt on tomorrow uh, do themselves justice. That's a lot, Ronnie. Thank you. Stuart. Uh, Ronnie, in terms of the... <coughs> Excuse me. In, ter in terms of the young lads, when you're first sort of making that decision about whether you should give them a chance, because as you say, you don't know until they, they do it what they're up to, yeah. what sort of things are you looking for? Well, we, well, just if they know the job, yeah. first and foremost, that's what we like to, to see. We've watched every B team game, we've We've had, had, had a chance to do so, me and the gaffer, to, to have a look at the lads getting insight. Uh, the gaffer's always encouraged the younger ones to come and train with us so we can have a look at him like young Phillips is training with us now, who's come back from injury and he's been, you know, he's been refreshed and see a young kid come back from injury, scoring a few goals and training with the first team. We love things like that. And then it's just like that progression then, can you do enough to, to, to get the gaffer to put you in the first team? And that's what they've got to do and they, that's what they've got to strive for. <clears throat> not just except being in, in and around the first team squad. They've got to want more than that. They've got to get in that team and want to get in that team. And hopefully one or two will come to the fore. I mean, the, the gap has traditionally had a reputation for sort of relying more on experienced players, but you did, you did have to dip quite a few younger lads in last season. I, I wouldn't say that, really. Uh, we give, I think he'd give Victor Moses his debut. I think he'd give Nathaniel Klein, the kid who played for Leeds yesterday, Sam Bynum, he'd give him his debut. Uh, 
So, no, he, he has gone with the young ones. Uh, he, he isn't bothered, if you like, 35 or 20. He will give the opportunity. If you show enough in training and you have that desire and willingness and he can trust you within that set of what he does, he'll play you whatever age. Fair enough. Um, but, I mean, were, were you pleasantly surprised by the quality of some of the lads who did come into in last season? You know? Yeah, they, they, they've done OK. They just need to run a games, don't they? Yeah. They've got to knock that door down if they want to do it. There's an opportunity. We haven't got the biggest squad in the world. Mm. So as a younger pro, I think that this would be a great opportunity for me to go and knock that door down now. So it's all there for them. And uh, hopefully tomorrow night a few of them can go and prove a few things to the manager and to the supporters. And Neil talked quite a bit when he was here last season about only wanting to work for a short spell, you know, a couple of months. That's obviously gone out the window now. He's, I think he said that a few times before. <laughs> exactly. But I, I just wonder, does that, does that sort of put extra responsibility on you and the coaches around him to just take a bit of weight off him? So that you can... No, he's, he's got an unbelievable work ethic and desire like you wouldn't believe, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, he, he just non stop. Like yesterday, you think you can have a rest, it's a relaxing day at home yesterday on Sunday, and he's never off the phone. He's picking the team for next week, next Saturday. Uh, he's onto the physio, bit of availability. He just doesn't stop. He's non stop. He loves it. Uh, and long may that continue. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, do you think that's his biggest uh, problem, stroke strength, that he just can't let it go? He loves yeah, it he, 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 he's seen it all in terms of. Uh, performance-wise, uh, squad-wise, he, he knows where he's at. He doesn't always show his hand because he, you know, he doesn't want to give too much away to the opposition, other people, but he knows exactly where the squad is and where this football club's, club's at at this moment in time. And he's trying his utmost to improve that. And it's not going to be easy, but it won't be for the lack of trying. Um, we talked to you earlier. I just wondered if you could sort of give us an appreciation of the the work he's had to do and how he's been around the place. Oh, he, he's been an absolute dream as a lad. I really hope he comes back. I, I didn't see much of him before mm. we come to the football club, but as a, as a human being, he's an absolute diamond of a boy. And when you've had an injury like that, you just hope that he can come back and it'd be great for you to, to go and, and, and show us what he's all about. Because in terms of a human being, he's, he's just a fantastic kid. And, and how important is that, that you have a, a group of good human beings? It's well? massive. It's massive. And like... When you've got people like Jonathan Hogg at your football club, your Wardies, your Tom Lees, they set the tone for you in the change rooms. We don't have to win that change room because we've got good, solid pros. Your Matty Pearsons in this world, they're good and they lead in there and they, they're proper lads. So your, your Uters and your younger lads who are getting that change room now and seeing that and, and, and the, what they set and the standards they set in the training is good for the young ones. So we don't really have to influence that too much. And just, I mean, you talk about them on the training ground, but just in terms of on the field, I, I gather Hoggy was only expecting to maybe play 20 minutes on the weekend. When he, when he comes on early as he does, and he, you know, he makes a sacrifice, I'm sure other lads as well, to play when they're only half fit. Yeah, he, 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 yeah, Oggy, Oggy's will, will play for you. He's, he's always got something wrong with him as Oggy. <laughs> <coughs> but he's a warrior. He's a warrior, like, you know, we love him to bits and we, we know what we're getting from Oggy. Uh, and, and we knew Saturday when he put, we put him on, he, he, he played till the end. Yeah. That's Augie for you. We know we get everything for him, from him, like, you know. Uh, and and what we, he just sets the tone in the training. You see him in the training, uh, in and around the place. It, like I say, him, Tom Lees, your Wardies, your Matty Pearson. He's just great, great pros. Mm. But, but also, I guess when you've got lads like that, you, don't, you then don't want to be the lad who says, I could only do 20 minutes. You're kind of inspired by it. You know, the way yeah, we, like, yeah, we would never, we would never like, uh, if somebody could only do 20 minutes. Sure. Uh, but I'd like to know who's got a magic watch that you know you can only do 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't understand that sometimes. Or give us half an hour or whatever. I don't really understand that because if you're on the bench or whatever, you've got something in you, you might surprise yourself yeah. and do, your, do 50 minutes. So I don't get the 20 minute one. And just finally for me, I mean, you had such great atmospheres here at the end of last season. How much are you looking forward to just getting another competitive match? Well, we've got to give them something to cheer about like we did last year. That's our yeah. job. That's a player's job. And, uh, you know, we'll strive to do that because, like you say, the atmosphere was great, wasn't it? It was really good. But that's gone now. That's gone now. We've got to... It's done. We've got to get the support going again now. The players have got to improve their performances. And like I say, it's not going to be easy because it's a difficult, difficult league. But hopefully it won't feel the lack of trying.